and now I am recording. All right. Who's here? Who do we got here? Roll call. Roll call. What is this? I'm not like the new... Since I added the... Uh, where it archives my stream, now that's stuck at the top, and it's totally messing up my layout when I'm trying to see what's going on. Get rid of that. And let's go to that. Yes, yes, there we go, much better. All right, and make that tiny. All right, I can work with this. I can work with this. Who's here? Anyone? No, no one yet? That's all right, that's kind of my fault. I was really, really late with uh, getting everything up this week. So I apologize for that. We have had a very crazy week. And uh, it's not a very good excuse, but it is the one that I have. So. So, yeah. All right. So what actually are we doing today? So I put a poll up. I wouldn't be surprised. Oh, look. Oh, there's three new posts. <laughs> Can I see the results? Show results. That's what the big show results button is. All right, so it looks like we're getting a lot of responses for the uh, doing just a regular Q&A, which is good. But that only works if there are people here. So, so the ball's in your court. Um, what do we got? Cool. Fair enough. Well, if I don't see anyone in chat, I'm playing Children of Vector, so... I'm not sure if I'll be there tonight. I think it will be an interesting stream. Let's hope so. It's going to be very interesting if no one's here. It's going to be me talking to myself like an idiot. Okay. All right. Well. Well. All right. Well, until uh, until people start showing up, I'm just going to launch City of Vector. I mean City of Vector. Children of Vector. Um... Let's bring this up. That's another one of those. I don't need that. I already have one. Ha. Ha. And then I'll eat while I play. And if no one shows up in half an hour, then I'll probably cut it short. Because I have other things I can do. Like eat amazing food. Which... Is amazing. Amazing, which is amazing. These are the articulate powers that have got me such a strong following. All right. Mm -mm -mm -mm. You guys, want to see Children of Vector? Here it is. Um, let's turn that down. Hopefully, it shouldn't be too loud for you guys. Should be good for you guys. Has been in the past. I want to hear something. Yeah, don't look at that stuff. Yeah, spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. For anyone who does not want to see the stuff that will come in my non-existent hack. In an indie tournament. A number of decades into the future. Yeah, Vargas is a pain. Actually, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna go ahead and say that now. I was using Eggers patch or um, any 12 colors, and it doesn't work with Vargas. And that is because it assumes that the skin tones are in the same place, have to stay in the same place. And the reason it does that is that almost every character uses the skin tones, and also the skin tones are in very specific places um, for changes in status, like poison or berserk when uh, your face turns color, you know, stuff like that. So um, he needed that stuff to stay in the same place. And so I learned that the hard way, which means that in order to get Vargas working, I'm going to have to make him a second sprite sheet 
and a battle only pallet. So, there is a workaround. It involves using a bunch of free space to hold a second, um, hold a second sprite sheet. But considering we're already um, increasing the number of sprite sheets by like a bajillion, it's not a big deal at all. And it's really just for like the one character. As you can see, everyone else works fine. And actually, this, since this is actually called specifically from the OAM data, which is the save data where um, the sprites for the save data and the, um, and the shop menus are called, um, that actually re might require some additional work also. Because I don't know, because that I'm sure is mapped to the original, or maybe it's mapped to the world map. I don't know. I do not know what it's mapped to. Whether the battle one or the um or, or the world map one. <coughs> so it automatically picks up the locations if I uh put in like a random location and point to it. I think. I think. Actually I should check that. Not today. But anyway. Anyone out there? Anyone out there? Who does this say is here? I see Moog and Barum. I do not I do not recognize this Barum. I recognize the name Barum. Not know who this Barum is. Speak up. Very low turnout tonight. That's alright. So Children of Vector was um, designed to designed like it was this big long thought out thing. I mean it is a long thought out thing, but the inspiration, I think that's probably a better word. The inspiration for it was actually my brother's. Um, his original idea was to have... There we go. There we go. Hi. Moog? 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 Is that what we ended up saying? I'm trying to remember from our conversation last time. Anyway. Um, so yeah, so it was his idea. And it was originally very, very different from even the little bit that we have here. But it was supposed to feature um, Wedge. I think just Wedge. It may have been Wedge and Dix. Um, whatever you like, wow. Wow. Um, it looks kind of like Moog to me. So we'll go with that. Anyway, so the idea was something very similar to the concept of Children of Vector, which is basically um, another cast of characters running alongside the same story, you know, side by side. So all this stuff is happening in the main game, Terra, Edgar, Locke, Saban, yada, 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 all them doing their thing, and then over here interacting with the same story and dealing with a lot of the background stuff is this other cast of characters. So that is kind of the premise of Children of Vector. <laughs> um, it has since taken on a lot of direction of its own, but it's still essentially that. Um, so the very first idea I had with it was... I might not have the game selected. There we go. Was for it to look exactly like the original at the beginning, and then, um, after the scene with Terra and Trintage, instead of picking up with Terra waking up, you pick up with Wedge and Vix waking up. So it's supposed to look very much the same, and it does. 
incidentally, I did make small stat changes to um, Vix and Wedge because they were freaking OP. I know that's hard to believe because they are the random soldiers that they give you at the beginning, but their stats are OP if you ever look at them in... Uh, or they're very imbalanced. Maybe I should. Maybe that's a better way to say that. I almost dropped my water bottle. <clears throat> yeah, their defense was like stupid high, stupid high. So I had to tone down a lot of stuff. Um, and I think their vigor, their strength, their attack was high too. But anyway, all that to say. So, um, someone who is intimately familiar with the game could come in here and notice a few things. Obviously, the abilities for Guts and Cover. Guts, of course, being a throwback to uh, Final Fantasy Tactics. And Cover being all over Final Fantasy. <coughs> so, <coughs> so yeah. And I was about to give some major freaking spoilers just right there. Good thing I didn't. So anyway, so minor stat changes, but nothing too crazy. I know, right? And yes, I am aware it is supposed to be... I mean, who doesn't know that it's supposed to be Biggs and Wedge and that it was uh, originally from Star Wars, but... <coughs> but I just like the name Vix so much better. Plus, this game had such a huge stinking impact on me. I am a fan of the Wolseley translation. I love the name Vix. Plus, I have, I discovered this actually in the last few years, that I have a weird affinity for names with the letter V in them. Not like normal ones, but like Vix and Vargas and... <coughs> I do not know. But apparently I like the letter V. So, I didn't know this. It just what kind of ended up being a thing. <coughs> now normally, in a normal game... Uh, in vanilla Final Fantasy VI, I would be killing Vixen Wedge here so that Terra can soak up all the experience. But that would be very, uh, not helpful in Children of Vector. Doot, doot, doot. Alright, Fire Beam! Ice Beam! I like doing different ones, just so I can see all the different effects. Makes me feel like the game, like, there's an actual reason to it, but there's not. They all just destroy everything. No, I'm not killing Terra. I like Terra too much. Also, I have this awesome new water bottle. It's on sale at Target. And, uh... It keeps your beverages hot for like 12 hours and cold for like 8 hours. It's ridiculous. I can put cold water in it before bed and get up in the morning and have cold water. It won't be as cold, but it'll still be <coughs> significantly cooler than room temperature. She doesn't need the XP, but... I also don't have anything to really grind for. <sighs> because as you will soon find out, there is actually very little. Actually, um, so little, it is nothing after the stuff in my demo. Oh, I should probably heal people. Yeah, yeah, I'll heal people. Nah. Nah, nah. And... bam. Alright. Alright. Moving along. Um, actually,
actually, I believe you can. Like, even in the original, even in vanilla, I think you can kill Terra if you want to. I believe. What am I doing? What am I doing? Bioblaster. Ba-boom! Ba-boom! But yeah, it doesn't... It doesn't give you a game over if Terra dies. Um, even if it was a thing, I'm pretty sure I checked it at least and would have changed it. Like, I spent a ridiculous amount of time pouring over the beginning of the game. Because as much as everything looks exactly the same, everything got shuffled around. Like, Terra is not, um, does not have the character uh, identifier of Zero. Wedge does. So in all the scripts and all the stuff, I actually had to go back and renumber all the characters and fix their properties and do all the other stuff, put Terra somewhere else. That's why, if you notice on the save screen, um, Terra's palette in the save data was uh, was palette one, I think that is, the brown and blue one. So. And that's actually from a glitch on um, FF3 USMA. Because you can change uh, you can change the save data in the OAM for all the characters by changing the battle palette, but Terra's gets changed back, and here's why. In the OAM, the, uh, the, not the code, but the tables are of different sizes. All the primary characters have uh, two two uh, sprites worth of information. They have a standing, and then they have the fanfare. Like the dun-dun-dun-dun-dun. You know, the arms raised. So all the primary characters have that. Well, when you get to below that, there's a handful of other characters that need to have OAM data. The soldier, um... Soldiers, the, uh... Imps. Kafka. I don't know. The next couple characters after the uh, so beginning, Bannon, Leo. Anyway, the next handful of characters, and all all of them have the fanfare pose. All of the, so, uh, some of them just have the uh, <coughs> just have the one. And so where Terra Sprite is saved right now is actually where the imp used to be, I think. Um, and I actually changed the imp to something else. Whoops, I said yes. I do actually know how tents work and save points. But it's good to know that it's there. I'm not even going to save this. Um, but anyway, so when it's uh, saving the palettes um, in FF3 USME, it's going back through the characters, and it has the correct offset for, um, for Terra when you save it. But the one before that is the soldier, I believe, and the soldier is in palette one, the brown and the blue, and it's assuming that it's uh, got two sprites, but it doesn't. It only has one. Terra is actually in the spot where um, where the soldier would have its fanfare, and so when it saves the palette, it actually saves it in both locations, and so um, Terra's palette gets overwritten. So I actually have to go in and manually fix it in hex, um, which is what I did for the demo. But then as soon as I run you have. Um, F3 USME again. When did the stream start? Uh, like, 20 minutes ago. Yeah, yeah, I, I did a really bad job making sure everyone knew what was going on. Hi, Kuga. It, it hasn't been very long. I've just kind of been talking about random stuff and going through the beginning of COV. I'm still totally down with helping you with stuff, so... There a countdown? There. Oh, I forgot to put. I did forget to put the countdown on the on the thread. Sorry, that was kind of rushed. I apologize for my lack of uh, organization and preparedness recently. Um, it's been a crazy couple of weeks, and probably the rest of this month, which is actually only like another week or two now, um, is going to be probably pretty similar. We've been rushing around doing a lot of stuff um, at home that needs getting done. 
and so I have not had a whole ton of time. No, 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 trust me, I'm not, I'm not, oh, never mind. Wow. Wow, guys. <coughs> no flame wars. Yeah, Cuba's logging in from, like, what is it, Italy? So, so yeah, if you show up at all, I am mega impressed, because I can say I would not, I, I would not do that for me. So, so thank you very much. Thank you, Cuba. Um, yeah. I mean, I'll, I'll do a little bit more of this, and then we'll see if anyone else shows up before we get started on um, some of the hacking questions. Also, I'm going to eat more steak. And peppers. Because peppers are, like, the best vegetable ever. Man, I love this music. On my very first phone where I could set my own music, this was my song. This was my ringtone. And even when I could change it for like a bunch of different people, nope, I just use this. Because why would anyone have anything other than this as their ringtone? I'm one of those people that really likes the, the polyphonic ringtones. The ones that are basically just a MIDI. I don't like using, like, real songs. Again, air quotes. Yeah. Yeah, that was my fault. Yeah, sorry, Kugo. Uh-oh. He clicked out of the window. Uh, uh, duh, 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 duh. Nope. Nope. Hold on. There we go. Good thing he was in a shell that whole time. <laughs> Why, thank you, Wilk. That was very considerate of you. <laughs> Meanwhile, I'm trying to do actions down there, and that's what popped up in... I was typing into chat while I was trying to get things to happen. Oh, that'll make sense to you guys in a sec. Yeah. I'm typing that before you guys hear me say my explanation. Alright, am I in? There we go. Oh, man. It's like if you've ever... I don't know if you guys have ever been in a situation where you're playing, like, a online MMO. I'm not playing any currently, but if you're playing an MMO and then, like, an instant message pops up when you're in the middle of, like, trying to do something... And all of a sudden you send a whole bunch of, like, really weird, uh, messages to whoever it is. And like, what the, is what happening right now? Yeah. Yep. Bing bong bing. Man, nothing even ugh, nothing interesting has even happened yet. I'm surprised I've talked for 20 minutes just getting here. Do do. Man, I love this whole soundtrack. I will literally listen to it on my way home from. Ugh. Wow. <coughs> Do yourself a favor. Never get Italian dressing, like, up in your sinuses. That doesn't feel good. Um, yeah. I, like, listen to this soundtrack on my way home from work on a pretty regular basis. Oh, this was fun. This was my first foray into, uh, into battle events. Because just like, um... Just like the regular events, I actually had to go in and fix a bunch of stuff in here. And at the time I did this, no one had really done anything with battle events before. Um, only very little bit. Like, people had copied all the commands, which was a huge help. 
Um, <coughs> but I had to start doing experimentation on syntax and how stuff worked. And I had intended at some point to get around to actually documenting all the stuff that um, I was learning and try to come up with like a whole uh, like official looking document for how battle events worked. But that didn't happen. That's right, I'm actually really proud of my battle event later with the Necromancer. And so it begins. It was the first scene I ever envisioned. And this was the first scene, incidentally, that I ever uh, made with event editing. I put weird pauses in, and they're like barely noticeable. I mean, you can see everything stops right there. But I put weird pauses in before the dialogue boxes come, came up, because for some reason, when I was making my first event, I was like, okay, I, I didn't think it looked right when the box just popped right up. And then by the time I got to my second event, I threw that entirely out the window, and it, there's nothing wrong with it. In fact, the pauses aren't really that noticeable <coughs> between when they stop moving and the text box pops up. Like, it's totally wasted space. But, no. Anyway. I don't think any of this is confusing. I feel like some of the later parts were a little bit confusing. And I'll bring those up when we get there. But they're kind of setting a stage here. And by the way, my brother wrote the dialogue for almost this entire thing. The only thing that I wrote was... Um, the stuff with the necromancer. <coughs> I had to add all that because we didn't actually have that. But I needed to, I, I wanted to lengthen things and I wanted to have like an opening sequence. And we'll talk about that later. Goodness gracious. These were, uh, I think, my second and my third... Oh, no, actually, my third and my fourth sprites I ever made. The first one I ever made was actually um, a full sheet for Vargas back that I made in college when I was, like, first um, learning about anything hacking. So this was, like... This was, like... 13 years ago now? It's really weird that hacking has been around that long. But but anyway, yeah. That's when I made my first full sprite sheet. And then I accidentally um, dropped that computer on my knee and broke the screen. Um, <coughs> and I thought the sprite sheet was really good. It was probably not very good. But I remember it as being good. But it used um, all the colors. This was before I knew anything about that. And so it was really, so I never got it working. Um, and then the second sprite I ever made, Lundra. Man, I keep messing up putting that thing in the, um, I keep messing it up putting that in there. Well, I did not drop it on my knee on purpose. <coughs> in fact, I was waiting for it to shut down and I was running upstairs, balancing it on my hand because I was late for something. And it started to fall and I was trying to catch it and I brought my knee up, and bam, right there. And there was just... Oh, it was awful. The screen was destroyed. <laughs> I did not make these. I did not make these. Uh, this one... Wedge... Oh, uh, I can't even mouse over it because I'm in the game. Wedge was made by... Um, uh, I think it was Lord Sutabenu, who was, uh, I think, the admin slash owner of the site for a long while. I think. Don't correct me if I'm wrong. And then, um, Vix was made by I think Zebulon, who was around for a very short time. Did some really promising work. Did some really consistent stuff. And I worked with him on this. And he was going to help me with some other stuff. But then he kind of went AWOL. 
and then he popped up like one more time after that. But I only said like one thing, and then didn't come back. So I can't really blame him, but it means I won't have as consistent stuff. Like, to be fair, Wedge doesn't look a ton like um, an actual portrait that Final Fantasy does. It's not bad. But if you put it next to Terra, it doesn't look like... I guess it doesn't look <coughs> very Amano. Not that Vix looks a ton like it, but Vix does not stand out nearly as much when um, next to some other uh, portraits. But anyway, yeah, the Vix one is amazing. Now, I did <coughs> do L'Oreal on my own, and we'll see hers later. Um, and that took me freaking forever, because I'm not artistic, but I am very technical, and I am super anal, and I've got a pretty decent eye, so. I just wasn't finished, I was still working on her hair. But, um, but yeah, I was pretty proud of that one. And that one I actually made. Hey, Mad, you made it. No, 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 it was, uh... I think it was like that. Or or something. Or something. <clears throat> um anyway. Yeah. But yeah, so these these worked out. I was I was actually having him work on um work on a wedge for me, but he disappeared before that. He was working on a wedge and a L'Oreal. And both of those disappeared. Anyway, so my second my second sprite, which is my which I think I have actually lost now, which I'm super bummed about, um, <coughs> was actually a red mage type character. Um, who was going to be one of the characters in here, but I ended up making a new sprite sheet for him, and that was actually one of the ones that. Uh, you saw on the... What am I doing here? I don't even know what I'm doing. I cover, and then I gotta row you. And you gotta get out of there. You gotta do that. <coughs> Wham. Oh, right! Oh, I love Futurama, too. Man. <coughs> was it Zebulon? Is that what it was? I never saw it in print, so I never even... didn't even occur to me. Wedge has got some cool stuff with guts. If we have time later, maybe I'll go back and turn them all on and, like, rush through the beginning and, like, fast forward and let you see some of them. Because messing with abilities is fun. Ability animations are cool. Alright, you kill that. You cover. Ow! I forgot to row you also. Um. No, just kill him. Just get it over with. how I feel about that. That's, uh... I do not know the origins of those pictures, but I'd prefer not to, uh... not to think about it. <coughs> I'll tell you guys right now, I have a really soft spot when it comes to kids. Oh, crap. I totally forgot about that. And doing everything else I was supposed to do. Alright, let's do this. Let's do this. steak. Oh uh, yeah, so last week it was cake, mad. This week it's steak. 
cake and steak. <coughs> Yummy. Where am I going? My dip's over here. We also make this actually mo. I made it this time. Oh, my wife normally makes it. Um, it's really good dip out of uh, it's like mayonnaise and marscapone cheese, which is like a really soft um, cheese that you can get at the deli, and then like some spices and stuff like curry powder and it is really good for steak. It's like my favorite thing. All right, let's put you in the back row and equip you with the blundra, which I forgot to put your little icon on it. <coughs> Man, every time I go to fix that, I screw something else up. Anyway. Yes, I know, I saw the, the Futurama pick at the bottom. Um, I don't want to go get that. <coughs> I don't want to go get that. Boom, boom. No, don't die! No, Tonic's fine. Actually, no one else can hit him. Nothing in here does anything that can get past cover. But I do need to get, um... I do need to get freaking level 5 so I can... It's either 5 or 6, but I think it's 5. So I can get sap. So heal my own life. Can I put Vix on top? <coughs> sure, I guess. So anyway, Wedge and Vix very predictably use the same uh, poses as the soldiers, which made spriting very easy. In fact, it, I basically started with a recolor and then added things. I ended up having to make the arms thicker because, uh, I don't know if you ever noticed this, but the soldiers have like noodle arms and it looked really bad with the without, like, the large shoulder pads or the helmet to kind of hide it. But anyway. Yeah. See how fat their arms are? But it looked really, really bad when they were, um, when they were only one. When they were only one, uh, pixel of color. And then, uh, so wedges outfit or whatever, it was basically supposed to be like a, an undersuit, like a blue undersuit that would go underneath the Imperial armor. Just regular brown boots, which I think is just exactly what was already on there. And then he's supposed to be wearing kind of like a kind of like a brace with a shoulder strap. <coughs> now, the one problem with doing asymmetrical stuff in spriting is that um, it uses a lot of mirroring. So, whenever they do certain poses. I need to make sure if Wedge is a viable option to be used there, that I only do it a certain way. And I'll show you what I'm talking about later. When uh, they look to the side, you know the, you know, the sprite where they're like facing forward, but they, they look to the side. Oops, I just used cover on myself. Good job, dummy. Um, kill things. Ah, eh, kill things. <laughs> but anyway, it's supposed to look like uh, a brace or whatever. <coughs> and I just could not figure out what to do with Vix to save my life. And um, I ended up doing something that I would normally really dislike doing and would think it a cop-out for other people to do. And it's not like super, it's actually not super easy to tell, but it's actually supposed to be, um, he's got the same kind of undersuit, only his is green. And then on top of that, he's actually wearing the, uh, the tank top style Saiyan armor that Vegeta wears on Dragon Ball Z. That is actually what that is designed after. And so it's hard to see here, but actually if you look at the portrait, you can actually see the, um, kind of the shoulder strap coming up there. <coughs> so, so there you have it. Vix is a Saiyan warrior. Am 
I not down at the bottom here? What is going on? This is supposed to auto scroll. This, uh, this here was kind of meant just to showcase because uh, when I was originally doing all this, it was for the demo. I was trying to show the kinds of things I was going to be doing, but I don't know that this would necessarily have ended up staying in the final product just because it's kind of pointless. I mean, I, I had explained it away in a sense. Um, even though you don't pass through there in vanilla. The idea is that in the world of Ruin, everything got shifted around. So, it's pretty easy to explain it away by saying that either it went away entirely or, I don't know, no. What about the Blitz bug? What's happening now? I shouldn't go through this too fast. People are probably reading it. Pretty proud of myself for that transition to the music. I spent a lot of time thinking about music cues. I spent a lot of time paying attention to like everything. Yowza. Oh! That was fun. No! So yeah. So it's people fighting espers. And a person casting magic. So these are supposed to be hints <coughs> about the War of the Magi. Of course, anyone who's played the game knows kind of some of the stuff that happened here, and so it's already aware of all this. So this right here is what I was talking about. See how he's got his head turned to the side? If I had ha decided to turn the head to the other side, it's actually a mirror image. And so hypothetically, if I had had Wedge up at the top, it would have turned his body around and his shoulder strap would have popped over to the other side. So that's why every time that we use this sprite, and Wedge is a viable person that could be at the top of the list, you know, that could be at the top of the party, um, then it has to look this way. So it's basically a self-imposed limitation. <coughs> so, but it's alright, it's worth it, because I really like Wedge's sprite. I almost never do this with Vix in the front. It's kind of weird. I hope so. use the wrong sprite for the queen there. I think it's supposed to use the, um, uh, opera cellus for this. That's alright. I don't really feel like exploring or reading what they have to say. Actually, I wrote this part, too, with the guards. <coughs> Basically everything re re referencing the Necromancer. I did. Wait, I think. No, 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 yeah. Yeah, I wrote that part. <coughs> My brother's a way better writer than I am. <clears throat> uh, 
<sighs> so I hope that this stuff makes sense. Basically, the idea is that these specific projections... So, the ancient castle has a lot of uh, ambient magical energy floating around it because of the events that happened in the past. L'Oreal's here for a reason that you don't know, but I do. But L'Oreal's here. And she is basically unconscious. What's going on with this? So in my chat, it is not auto-scrolling. Oh. Hey, Vilham. I apologize for not responding to that sooner. Hold on, I, I gotta catch up, apparently. Oh, I totally forgot about that. Totally forgot about that. Sorry about that. Um, and those were due, like, I don't know, when are those due? Mad? The, uh, the little clips. I'll get something together for you. I'm sorry. I already have a video. All I have to do is chop out little clips for it. Ugh. There we go. Alright, I think I've got that fixed now for the chat. See, the chat window you guys see in, um... Well, I mean, you guys see the actual chat window because you're on Twitch. But the chat window you see on my window, I don't actually see because OBS is minimized. I actually have Twitch up kind of over to the side. <coughs> and for some reason it wasn't scrolling. <coughs> yeah, we're, we'll, we'll go into some of that stuff too. Um, but yeah, event stuff. Actually, as it turns out, uh, Mad Seer actually uh, does some event scripting tutorials. He has a, a tutorial on some of the basics and then specifically on uh, the B2 command. So all this stuff is done in hex decimal in like the actual machine code of the game. So if you like take the game and you look at it in the machine code, what the computer is actually looking at, you can actually edit it there. We have an understanding of the Super Nintendo processor to such a degree that we can actually decipher what's happening on like a bit by bit level, which is really cool. I'm like really into that kind of level of control. I'm a very controlling person. But yeah, I spent um I spent years That's messed up. It's supposed to go um it's supposed to come to this page from the uh <coughs> oh, wait, hold on. What are you talking about? Oh, that's messed up. That's supposed to just go to F... Oh. Uh, does Twitch make me have to go to Twitch? No, nah, that can't be right. I must have just messed up that panel. I'll fix it. Thanks for the heads up. Thank you. Thank you. I'll look at the camera when I say that, because... Your screen name in chat doesn't know that I'm looking at it. But if I look at the camera, I can trick you into thinking that I'm looking at you. Anyway, I've been sitting here for long enough. Uh, hold on, let me go back to this. <coughs> Shoot, and now I'm going too fast again. I gotta learn to pace myself. I'm very bad at pacing. <coughs> oh, 
Oh, so I was explaining uh, what was going on here. So basically, um, L'Oreal's latent magic ability, I guess not so latent, L'Oreal's magical ability is basically interacting and responding to the ambient magical stuff in the area, specifically with Odin's lingering power. And that's what's bringing all this stuff to life that's happening around. It's not really alive, but it's <coughs> images and shadows and whatever else. And so <coughs> that's why Odin says it's only by her power that I can speak to you. And so it's, this is something entirely different from what they showed in Final Fantasy VI in the vanilla. <coughs> um, whereas that is more of like a flashback or a showing of maybe what happened. And they actually leave that kind of vague. This is actually bringing something up that is actually happening now, but in reflection of what happened in the past. And because the magical ability, you know, because the ambient power is specifically Odin's, or is based <coughs> mostly in Odin's power, and that is primarily what L'Oreal is interacting with, the shade of Odin, um, has a higher level of awareness of things outside of the events that are being caused. <laughs> the shadow events, basically. So so that was really complicated, and I wasn't sure that we were getting that across clearly, and I had <coughs> thought about going back and either adding more dialogue or something. So I hope that's working out for you guys. Um, I need you to excuse me for one second. I'm going to mute. I don't think anyone wants to hear that. <clears throat> Allergies have been kicking my butt this week. Like, seriously. They're doing okay right now because I, like, just took a ton of allergy medicine. But, oh my goodness. I work 12 stories up in the middle of a city. And it's still bad. It's like, I cannot get very much farther away from the trees than I am getting and it's still kicking my butt. So anyway, so Odin's pointing out here that he can tell that L'Oreal's magical ability is not natural. <coughs> Anyone who's played Final Fantasy VI should immediately have their mind jump to something, but we'll, which they actually reference in a second here anyway, <coughs> and that it's causing her problems in her brain put it bluntly. Oh, there it is again. You see uh, Wedge? Has to look to the... Um, his right, our left. Otherwise, it mirrors his image. And his shoulder pad moves. So, again, gotta keep him in a certain spot. Side note, I really don't like that um, that angle for his hair. But I could not find one that worked well. A lot of little things I would change. So that's the L'Oreal portrait, as I've got it. <coughs> um, the hair needs a ton of work, but it was from an Amano picture, because everything else came from Amano artwork. <coughs> and I like it for the most part. I think it's I think it's actually really good, except for the hair. I think if I could get the hair right, it would be basically good to go. <coughs> um, maybe darken a couple of the shadows. It's just a matter of finding the right number of colors to use between the hair and the um, and the shadow. Like, <laughs> she definitely looks really pale, but so does a lot of Amano stuff. <coughs> um, and this was basically just like me taking the image and shrinking it down and then converting it to indexed and then like tinkering with colors <coughs> and then using the original and trying to like change one pixel at a time. And again, I am not artistic. I'm just super anal. <coughs> hey, Jackamus. Jackamus Wedge. <coughs> um, actually, my brother came up with the name. Um, he made it up entirely for this, for his original idea 
long before Children of Vector was Children of Vector. He came with the, he came up with a character character called L'Oreal, who was a crazy Magitech confusement experiment. Oops, spoiler. Not that that wasn't already known. But that's where the name came from. I think I think it's a derivative of Lorien from Lord of the Rings. I think that's where I came up with it. What's my enter button right now? Enter? There we go. <coughs> yes. This is Children of Vector. As much of it as I have, which is basically what the demo is, so I'm sure you've all seen it. The name... No. No. No relation to L'Oreal. At least I don't think so. Again, my brother made it up, so maybe he did, but... I'm more inclined to believe it's a uh, derivative of Lorien. Lothlorien. <coughs> <coughs> so they're talking more about... Magitech Infusement, and how Kefka's a little bit cracked. Just some commentary. <coughs> I feel like this... this cards a little bit all over the place. But that's alright, because this is for people that have played the original game, so... <clears throat> so originally right here, it was supposed... it was everything was supposed to keep shaking, and there was just going to be a boss battle here. And then, um... And then they were going to have to escape. But I thought that was a little bit too short, and I need to stretch it out. Because we don't have a ton of events planned um, to mirror us to getting us to some other key events. And so I wanted to flesh this out. Um, and also because, again, this was about doing all this in preparation for being a demo. I wanted to have some extended stuff and something like the Save Terra event. So here's the Necromancer, which I think in the game they actually just call him the Sorcerer, so maybe I would change that? I don't know. I don't remember what they reference <coughs> that character as. But because um, because this character, the Necromancer is what I'll say, um, had so much magical, latent magical ability, or not latent, um, magical ability also that is dispersed throughout the castle. He's got enough awareness to find out what's going on also. Which Odin didn't know because it's not like they're walking around as people. They're still subject to um, everything that's happening with the Shades. <coughs> but he's able to have, gain enough awareness to pick up on what's going on now. And is making a plan to basically take over L'Oreal's body and then live in the new world, in the real world. Oh. So anyway, the name Children of Vector um, actually, in a sense, relates to the plot. Ouch. I need to heal. Wedge. Get sap so I can actually, like, do something. <coughs> so, Children of Vector uh, vaguely relates to the plot and um, actually got the structure for the name from a Star Trek book I read called Children of Something. I don't even remember what it's called right now. <coughs> and I thought that was a really neat title. <coughs> and so, to make it applicable to our game, our setting, it would be Children of Vector. I thought it had a nice ring to it. <coughs> so these are actual ghosts. That's why they don't have, um, that's why they don't have the other palette. So these are actual ghosts. We should have gotten a full heal there. We did. Okay. I did a lot of full heal, full, full heals in here. Wow, it's already ten thirty. Is Kuga still around? Are you still around, Kuga? I promise we'll do something for you. 
What, what was it you were looking for? I'll try to rush through the rest of this. Yeah, you're late. That's my fault, though. I'm taking all blame today. Doesn't matter what it's for. Just blame me for it. And I'll be like, yeah. Yeah, that's true. So. Late to work. Whatever. B-Run's fault. Yeah, do things. Come on. I'm trying to cut my steak. It's super cold now, but... So good. My wife makes the best steak. Makes the best food in general, but... Specifically right now. It's about steak. There's sap. Oh, that sucks, Kuga. I love how he's like dances around. <laughs> he's like, nope. Kind of gives you an impression that he really is on another level. <coughs> yeah, they're basically like Moogles. In fact, you can even heal them. What am I doing? I should be doing things. Rather than not doing things. Like, hypothetically, I could cast Cure on them. The thing that gives the, uh... Makes the ghost get hurt in vanilla... Is that they're equipped with Relic Rings. Which basically makes them undead. Haha! -ha. No! Dang it! Stupid piece of monkey. Well, I only do one side. Actually, I don't know. Oh, look at that. Only one side. <coughs> That's fine. Don't go waste. No, no, get back here. Cover, you're not doing anything useful anyway. So they are actually in the ancient castle. The same one that they visit, that the main cast visits in vanilla. <coughs> That's right, the, the, the ghost will get auto to here in a second. Um, they actually, they actually mention that, that the armors are, uh, broken, essentially. Yeah. Yeah, they're broken. Oh, wait, hold on. Alright, so I have not actually imported the music for this yet. What am I doing? So I'm going to go ahead and just play... Oh, uh, shoot, where is it? Where do I have it right now? Music. That. Tell me if the audio turns out totally off, like way too loud or something. What am I doing? There we go. <coughs> I actually have it blank here because when I made the video for this, I actually had to put the music on top of it because I didn't have the, the um, song wasn't finished yet. So I had to basically in my video editor put the song on top. And so I just didn't have music for this part. And so I just went ahead and set it, turned it on with whatever. Anyway. <coughs> I'm 
the display is a little messed up. Oh, because of the, um... Yeah, I noticed that last time I did this. Let me... Let me get those off of each other if I can. Oh, well, hopefully that helps. Oops. Yeah, see, everyone got a full heal. <coughs> yeah, it's 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 pretty weird. It's probably still gonna be messed up. Grab this. Da-da! Ha! <coughs> oh yeah, I can minimize it. I don't know why I left it up there. That's really weird. Yes! Um, This is a song by William Kage. He is on YouTube. He does... Um, original songs that are in the style of classic um, classic video games. So he's got stuff for this, he's got a bunch of stuff for Chrono Trigger, he's got a bunch of stuff, oh shoot. Um, let me do this. I don't know, I don't know, just kill things. But anyway, yeah, if you're interested, I'll get a, I'll get a link to his stuff, but it's, um, here, let me, I'll find you a link for him. Da -da -da. Come on. Ah, no, not that. I want um, this one. And I don't want to show you that, so I'm just going to type in... Shoot. Shoot. No, I'm not bringing up my, my YouTube on there. Hold on. I'll do it on my other window. <coughs> does ridiculously good stuff and I got in touch with him like three years ago when I was making this and uh, and he was really excited to help but he's also super busy um, so we got through this one but I had to leave basically hacking for a while in the meantime anyway But it's like so fitting. Such good music. Kill things. <clears throat> so yeah, like basically all of his songs I would use in my hack. <coughs> but getting him to transfer all of those or convert all of those to the right format. Um, it's not working. Or not, was not working, but it would take a lot of work. <coughs> At least these ones are facing the right way. Alright, cover wedge. Sap. And kill, 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 kill. things. Also, that graphical glitch that you just saw, if you saw it, with uh, Vix being on top of Wedge, that has to do with the um, the love token. <coughs> and uh, I do not know a way around it as of yet. It was something to look at. Uh. Jeez. 
I already bought like three quarters of everyone. Alright, hold on, let me turn the music back off. Goodbye. Um. Yeah. <coughs> anyway, I love this boss battle. I love it. What am I doing? Yeah, I don't really care about that. Die in a second. Yeah, no, that's just gonna work. Come on. Guts. Heal! Don't die! Come on. It's okay that the ghost died. Oh, yeah, I should be fighting. This is a glitch. Watch. That is not supposed to do nearly that much damage. And it only happens here. I don't know why. Everywhere else, it does like 8 damage. Here all of a sudden, it does 160. Um, the problem we were having with the songs was that he had to basically transcribe the whole thing by hand um, to fit the MIDI format, I guess. And I don't know much about music composition, but he used, like, professional software. And in order to turn it into a MIDI, he had to make it again from scratch. So that's what was going on. No, I checked that. At least I'm pretty sure I checked that. Seems like that would be like the first thing I checked. Anyway, so I super love that that whole scene. I just totally missed the whole thing. Basically, he took control of your uh, your two dudes, and so it went from four on one to three on two. And I had originally planned these guys to be a lot more difficult. Of course, they're not very difficult when this happens. Oh, and this is the other thing. It's definitely not. Um, has to be a MIDI to... Well, MIDI is what you use to import to MML. What am I doing? Kill things. Kill things. So anyway, if I got that bug worked out, this fight would actually be a fair amount harder. I mean, still not that hard, because Bix and Wedge actually make, like, a really good team. So anyway, if I get that damage, um, that damage bug worked out, this would actually be a tougher boss. <coughs> Not that I want it to be crazy tough. Uh, I don't need to do any of that. Just, just die. Just die. He doesn't use ice anymore. Those are both scripted. Oh no, that, that one that you just listened to, um, the one that I just was playing, was the one that he actually completed, finished for me. He gave it to um, Gein Attack, who made it into an MML, imported it into the game, and then recorded it, and sent me, the, sent me a file. So I actually have the, actually have the whole thing. And that, what I was just playing, was a recording of it playing actually on Final Fantasy III. And so, I actually have all the data for it to put into the game. I just haven't gotten around to doing it. So, so for that specific song, the whole process is done.
So, this part I thought was also a little bit confusing, or maybe it's not, I don't know. But the idea is that she can basically, under the right set of circumstances, um, teleport. Which sounds really weird. But they were teleported here, with power. And that ties a lot more into her character. We came up with the idea of actually coming here, long after we had established her character, and that being something that she does on occasion. But again, spoilers. <clears throat> I feel like a lot of this makes sense because I know everything about these characters. This was a fun one to make, actually. I had to work out, um, like, all the camera stuff, which sounds really weird, but, like, specifically this, how the camera followed Wedge around for a little while. <coughs> and now they're talking about Terra again, by the way, which I know is, like, whiplash after what we just went through. They start talking about Tritach and Terra right away. <coughs> Hold on, I need to... I need to pull my nose again. Alright. <coughs> but anyway. So I had the camera... You know, move up with Vix, and then move over with Wedge. And then stay still. And the whole point was to get things off center. So that I could do that. <laughs> I did everything, like, I the first time I ran through this, all that stuff, like, camera was stationary the whole time. And I decided to move it around so that I could do that. Besides, now we have other, con you know, we have other concerns now that I could focus back onto L'Oreal. she was actually going to be kind of a, a sad, somber character, but we felt like that might be... Actually, it was my brother's idea to change her. We were worried she was becoming too Terra-like. Too much like Terra. And so, on a whim, he wrote an alternate ending or an alternate scene for this part. And that's where this, that's what actually what this is. The other one had a very, very different tone. <coughs> um, but this just was perfect. It like just sprang to life. It was amazing. <coughs> I don't know if anyone picked up on this, but the, uh, the scholar over there has been paying attention to what's going on. Because he's there in the game, and there's no way he would not respond to what's happening, so I decided to write him into the scene. Yeah. <coughs> <coughs> the idea is like she's like basically a little kid. She has like no emotional maturity at all.
This was a weird... This was, uh, Maybe weird is the wrong word. I thought this was a nice touch by my brother. It doesn't, like, have something specific that it's moving towards, but when Wedge says, yeah, something, I feel like that was something that Woolsey would put in. Like, he was writing very specifically to try to sound like Woolsey. I thought he did a really good job with it. <coughs> but this is as far as we actually had in the script, so... <coughs> That's right. I didn't keep working on it anyway, so... L'Oreal does look a little bit washed out compared to these two. And I think she needs like a good outline. I should lighten her hair and give her an outline. Oh, I'm not going into spoilers. Not too much anyway. <laughs> my brother very specifically had me remove the, um, when I released my files the first time, had me remove all the stuff with the, uh, with the story elements. So <laughs> So yeah, I'm not going to I'm not going to go into all that. Um but it was going to it was going to follow um a bunch of characters that were semi related to the plot, like it was going to focus a lot on um well, on side characters that they didn't really explore. <laughs> so it brings back Vargas. Um if people were looking at the beginning of this, it's not as much a spoiler now, but it brings back Daryl. So it does a lot of stuff like that. Um. Anyway, you'll notice uh, Trance is down here covering what magic normally is. So when we were talking about abilities, we were talking about variants and why things need to be different. The reason why we have so many different ways to select abilities, why we have so many different looking abilities, is because we don't want to play a ton of characters that are the same thing. That's why sometimes it bugs me when I see a bunch of people on topics um, talking about ability hacking, <coughs> just wanting everything to basically be um, like Magitech. Select ability, it does ability. Move on. Select an ability, it does an ability. Move on. I feel like that's really dry and kind of boring. And so, I thought having different ways to actually play the characters was important. And so Trance, and I will show you this, and it's not in what my intended final form was, <coughs> but Trance is basically, um, um, I'm not going to do that. Here, you cover that, though. So this, you might be able to pick up, is actually based off of the uh, the characters in the party, okay? And it doesn't actually scroll down even though it has the arrows, I just didn't figure, couldn't figure out how to remove that. Um, and then there's a bunch of symbols for magic. So basically, each of the um, characters in the party will have its own script or set of commands at the very least or AI for L'Oreal to follow and so it's based off of the, the current party and she's going to kill it too fast so you're not really going to get to see it very much <coughs> but it's basically like rage but it's like a magic rage only it doesn't just have two random abilities it has um actual algorithms that determine what ability to use so that it's actually like strategically useful and it has damage modifiers based on her level so that um, scaling works properly so she'll get access to some stuff really early so bolt right here yeah it does it's actually doing less than normal bolts damage output and that's because she's a level 1 character. Um, but when she gets up to, like, level 100... Or, no, I think I have it cap out at, um, 50? I think 50 is where the scaling stops improving. 
the damage gets up to um, a little above bolt three, I believe. And so there's kind of a gentle scaling as you go through the as you go through the game based on her level. Um, <coughs> so that way it uses a lot of those other abilities. It also uses some blue magic abilities and monster abilities and stuff like that on occasion. No, 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 not not that. Uh, so what it does is there's a set of you know what I'll just I'll just show you because I actually did release this at one point. Um, <coughs> and actually I don't even know if I don't even know if this is uh, if this is entirely correct. Okay, so yeah, so this this was the plan that I was currently working from. <clears throat> so basically there's a um, a spell pool, like a list of abilities that she can work with. There's a spell that she has a high chance of using at you know when she first um, picks the you know when she first sets up the trance. And she continues having a high chance of using it until she uses it. And that's normally like some sort of buff or debuff or whatever. It's different for each for each character that you select that, that you would that you pick. Um, so that's a starter spell. There's an HP based spell. So when the party's total HP gets below, I think it was half, then there's a chance for her to do a specific spell. Normally, some either either some form of heal or I don't know. Uh, it's gonna again. It was gonna be different for each character. A personal based HP spell, which means when her when her HP hits a certain point, she she's gets increased chance to cast a certain spell. And um, I hadn't built this in yet, but each trance was going to have a counter spell. So building in some additional utility that um, other characters don't have. So it would add a spell that you can use to counter when she gets hit. And all of these were going to be tailored to um, basically whatever whatever characters are in the party determines which ones um, which four she can choose from. But then she picks one, she's locked into it, and then she's got all of these for that one. So, Vi oh, excuse me. Vix and Wedge are both Imperial Soldier. So, Imperial Soldier. This, these were ideas I was picking up, but what I ended up with was this was the primary spell pool: Fire, Tech Laser, Bio Blast, Safe, and Flare are the spells you can cast. The starter spell, which I don't, uh, which I don't think I had programmed yet, was going to be shell. It was going to be a full party shell, not just a single target shell. So that's some bonus utility over um, over the standard spells, um, which means she's going to have like I think it was like a fifty percent chance of casting that every turn until she casts it, and then it doesn't cast it anymore. So if we're Cuts down on redundancy. Um, Party-based HP spell, a cure, personal-based heal force. <coughs> Not really much of a reason why those two are different other than flavor. And then um, she has a chance to counter with, if she gets hit, she has a chance to counter with fire. And again, all of those, the damage and healing for all of these spells is scaled to her level. So that... Um, as different levels of, so that it continues being relevant. Um, so yeah, and then for Oracle, which is her job class basically, she is Bolt, Ice, Pearl, Drain, and Muddle. Starter spell is a AOE Slow. Party based HP is a Cure. Personal based HP is Drain, and Counter spell Drain. So that's high sustain. And I don't know, whatever. So the idea is, um, so that's basically the idea. That's basically the idea. <coughs> she does not need to be in the front row. Her. 
So yeah, I really like the idea of the sprite that I gave her. Is that it's like, I don't know, she's like floating with energy, I don't know. I thought that was kind of neat. And that's what the, the rage effect is. As you can see, without like the starter spell and without the counter spell and stuff, it can feel a little bit more random. <coughs> and also she's level 1, so she's doing like no damage. So it does not have the same level of effectiveness, exactly, as it will in like three levels. Incidentally, there's a pretty large jump between levels like one and four. Nope, nope, it's fully automatic. But the idea was that it was supposed to have some logic built into it so that it wasn't useless. So the bonuses, so the upsides were um, bonus utility, like the things like the AoE shell, which isn't available other places. Um, access to spells early. Um, ultimately, at the level cap for Trance, which is I think level 50, a lot of her spells do more damage than um, their counterparts would normally. Um, and yeah, and it's a different way to play, and it fits her character. So we go down here, and uh, uh oh, there's no Figaro. That might tell you about something that may have already happened. So anyway, cover. So that's actually all I have. That's actually all I have. I literally don't have anything past um, what was in for the demo. Which works out because it's actually 11 o'clock. Um, Kuga, if you're still around, if you are still around, Kuga, I am so sorry that we did not get to your stuff, and I'm sorry you were having problems with your internet. We will definitely, we will definitely do your stuff. Like this is actually a hacking stream, so next week we will actually do some more hacking stuff. <clears throat> I did not get very much prep time this week, and I actually, in incidentally, I probably won't get a much for next week either. Um, so, so yeah. Um, so I'm sorry. I hope that, I hope you do not feel as though your time was wasted tonight. Yeah, I know, right? What is up, Hugo? What is up with that? Oh no. This guy's actually gonna be gone. This is the next place that they're going to go. And I have everything planned out for it. I just haven't actually done it. And don't really plan to. <coughs> what now? He's not there. We literally just looked. We literally just went there. No Figaro. It's gone. It already sank. <laughs> Son of a submariner. <laughs> well, the story goes through the cave. Through the cave. Yeah, there's there's literally nothing out here. I already removed. I already removed Piro. It's actually over, over there. Now. <coughs> yes. Yes, that is the point. This takes place so th so they get out of there after that point. Um, I doubt it. 
I doubt it. He did a lot of that. He did a lot of that planning and writing, and I was definitely involved also. But I wasn't about to um, release that stuff without him. <laughs> and he said he'd prefer to keep it under wraps. So, so yeah, I probably will not be explaining much of that. I totally understand your point. I totally understand your point. <coughs> but out of respect for my brother, and um, in the uh, vague hope that maybe one day I would be motivated and have time to actually put more work into it, I wouldn't want it to be totally spoiled. I don't know. I'll think about it. Maybe one day. But then again, then again, after I actually, like, release the information, it stops being a mystery, and then nobody will like me anymore. Like, oh, okay. Well, that's interesting. I have most of the plot line and basically no script. As far as, like, the dialogue goes, if I had more script, I would have a lot more scenes built in. I would have a lot more stuff. <coughs> um, yeah, because incidentally, event editing doesn't take a huge amount of time if you already have a script. So as far as the plot, that was planned out. We, we, we've got most of that planned out. Some of it was in transition, but... Um, You know, I tried to get him to write more stuff quite a few times. But he also has a life. Unfortunately. That jerk. But, um... But, yeah. So... So, it is what it is. <laughs> Honestly, this was such a huge undertaking, I can't imagine... I can't imagine ever doing a whole game's worth of, um... Of brand new everything. Plus, there was still a ton of stuff under the hood that needed to get done. Honestly, like... Probably 90% of the work I did on this is under the hood, and like... Stuff that is not even part of this whole demo. <laughs> um, like, mechanic stuff. Like, the actual formulas haven't changed for the most part, but like mechanics for different abilities and um, basically all of the programming for L'Oreal's ability trance, which never got finished actually. Like, there was a lot of a lot of stuff like that. Additional sprites and things. So. So that's that. That's that. Like, I've got a lot of stuff in here. I spent a lot of time, um... What did I spend a lot of time doing? I have no idea. But this took me freaking forever to do. I just don't remember what I did with three quarters of it. Oh, look, there's the planning folder right there. Hmm. Hmm. I could go in there. I could go in there. But no. Actually, I will show you, uh... I will show you some of this. I did some tweaks to the one that was on that's uh, on our database. I like the casting sprite. That looks pretty cool. By the way, they had to bring it down. They couldn't use the green and the purple um, because of the um, the battle limit for palette colors. But anyway, I made a few tweaks because I thought some things looked unnatural, and I think the walking didn't work properly because they had just grabbed the walking. I think they had grabbed the walking sprite from the NPC, and NPCs walk backwards. They don't walk backwards like walking backwards, like moonwalking, but um, their sprites call a different order or something like that, or something like that. Because I don't know if you've ever noticed this with uh, 
if you guys now I didn't make this from scratch. Someone else made most of this. I just did I did a few small tweaks, and I don't remember exactly what now. But what I did do, what I did do. was this and it does it looks really crappy close up but far away it actually looks really good this is based off of uh nomura's artwork for daryl <coughs> there's also one for uh for vargas but i didn't end up using that one yeah here we go. That's a little bit better. Do I really want that outline that thick? Is that what they use for the other characters? That outline seems really dark. Yeah, I was actually really proud of her, the way her hair came out. That looks so good to me. Her eyes, unfortunately, I was really limited because I'd used so many colors in the hair. Um... I couldn't make the eyes look quite as natural as I would have liked. <coughs> but other than that, I was super proud of this this one. And then Vargas. Vargas is in here somewhere. Vargas was based off of um, um, some image I found of Vargas on the internet that I think was actually um, Mad Sears avatar for a little while a couple years ago but anyway so i used that and added a fair amount of shading and probably would have added more to get vargas in there so a lot of those look pretty good <coughs> um i had tried my hand at uh changing one of the other kappa sprites or one of the other kappa pictures to a sprite or to a portrait, rather. That ended up looking really weird. It, like, it kind of looks okay here, but it looks really weird in the game. And that comes from... Uh, some picture that I don't know where that is. Yeah, you don't need to see that. Oh, wait, that, came, that actually comes from... Stop, stop, go in. That comes from this. Which, this was Amano's artwork, obviously. And so I was picking different ones. Like this one ended up looking really weird, and this one was the best look, you know, the closest to one that looked good. Hypothetically, I could have done this one. I didn't even consider using that one. Maybe because it was so similar to that. But that may have worked out better. I don't know. I do not know. The ding dong ding blue moon. I don't know why I said that. Um, yep. Oh, I did a bunch of stuff. I did a bunch of stuff with Espers. That was fun. For anyone who didn't see my Titan EX boss thing, I had to make an edit of uh, that. Square at one point released a tiny little video in the old SNES, you know, 16-bit graphic format for the Final Fantasy XIV boss fight for this. That was supposed to be like, it was really cool. And so I immediately grabbed that sprite and tried to, and did my best to rip it. But it was actually a little bit bigger than, um, than the 128 by 128 that we can use. So I had to like fiddle with it a little bit. But this is straight from Final Fantasy Tactics. So this is one of our espers, Salamander. Um... Maga Sisters was going to be one. Kitsune. It's basically like a fox. Which this, I definitely could have gone back and done a better job at. This was while I was still learning some stuff. It looks okay at a distance. Garuda. That was made by someone on the forum. Um, a lot of these were just from other people. This was one that someone had made from either the forum or some other hacker. But then this is the one that Square came up with themselves for uh, All the Bravest. So clearly I'm just going to use that, that one because it's actually a little bit better. Miss Dragon, Ty Matt, um, probably not Wendigo. A lot of these were just things that I had as options, not things that I had actually decided on. 
Oh wait, I had this one too. Self. So I also I actually did had to do this one myself. This one was too big, and I had to do a lot of. No, I think I had to do color edits for this one. I had way more colors. This is also from Final Fantasy Tactics. That one actually turned out really good. That one turned out really good. What am I doing? What am I doing? Let's go back here. Let's let's have some fun with abilities because I don't feel like getting off just yet. Yeah, they, they clearly can't get the same espers. They can't get the same espers. So, that's the closest thing I had to, like, a full party put together with portraits and everything. Um, Alright, so Sylph. Uh, what's the next one I actually did? Salamander. What? Oh, that's right, L'Oreal can't use Espers. Because she doesn't have magic. I was going to give her some option there, where you, she could still equip one for bonuses and stuff. And Miss Dragon. We'll start with those. <coughs> yeah, but I can't do that from a lore perspective. It's not super fancy. And that, I think, is just a silence, which doesn't really matter. Mist Breath is HP-based damage. Salamander looks really cool. We'll get to that one. Vargas is green because of um, the... I explained that at the beginning of the video. It has to do with um, uh, Egger's NE12 colors patch for battle. It does not work for Vargas because he does not use the standard colors for his skin. He actually doesn't use one of the colors that most people use for skin. And so it doesn't replace that one. So um, that's why. So it's still in the range of so that pr those particular colors right there still exist in the range of colors that get overwritten by the um, the palette space that they end up using for the pointer finger and the damage numerals and stuff like that. Alright, so put Garuda in. Saw that. Uh, did I add Gollum? No, Gollum's a real one. Never mind. I knew that. I don't mind showing off some of this stuff. This one's pretty cool. I like that one. That one was really interesting because I wanted to use, um, actually, let's do, uh, here, wake him up. Come on. I want to use Katsune first. There we go. This is a full party buff, basically. Uh, when I say lore, I mean as in the... Um, I mean as far as this, like the story is concerned. So Katsune adds random buffs. Oh, you weren't supposed to see that. Alright. And Garuda, which I don't even know what I did with Garuda. It may not even be done. Well, that was pretty cool. Alright, I'm down. Um, actually, I don't think that one's even done.
You guys may have noticed that um, Vargas keeps taking hits and then countering. <coughs> and instead of Interceptor, there's a Chocobo there. There's a reason for that. <coughs> but anyway, yes, I'm making the story. But what I was saying was that I can't, um, I can't use the same Espers because this takes place alongside Vanilla. It's not in. It's not a change to the game. It's like all the stuff in Vanilla still happens, and my stuff's happening over here at the same time. So if they have if they have all the original espers, then my guys can't have those espers because they have them over here. There's none. So we have to get our own espers. That is why. Actually, had heard the same thing. Oh, it's gonna get that far. And that's like literally straight from someone else's. <coughs> yeah, that one was a little bit glitchy. That one's a little bit glitchy. <coughs> basically. Basically. It has a very different focus. Um, yeah, the only one I haven't done yet is Sisters. Clearly there wasn't a whole lot I could do with them. Unfortunately, the thing going dark is something I couldn't get around without following um, Crusader's animation exactly. But it works okay. <coughs> the focus of the story is basically following these other characters. Um, this, uh, it was originally supposed to explain a lot of the things that went unexplained, um, but it shifted more to just kind of filling out a lot of characters and a lot of other stuff, um, which is kind of the same, but isn't necessarily about specific questions. Um, <coughs> also, it kind of took on a life of its own, and so it does have uh, another plot that is very different. Um, very descriptive. It's, uh... It focuses a lot on, um... It focuses more on the Empire and, um... Magitech and the process and what it does and what it actually means. Um... There's a lot of undertones. There's a lot of um, stuff with uh, Vix and Wedge specifically. Um, there are similarities and differences, which are definitely not pronounced in the beginning so much. You probably won't pick up on a whole ton of it. Um, but in the very next scenes, I was 
going to put in um, when they're going into the uh, Fikro cave was going to start really differentiating their characters. So a lot of uh, comparison and contrast between those two characters and how they handle situations. Um, <coughs> um, I don't know how much I want to give away exactly as far as that. I mean, Kepka's still very integrally involved. <coughs> Whether he's the primary villain or not. Okay, I have to... I, I should at least say that Kefka is still the primary villain. And I said that with a weird inflection on purpose. He is still the primary villain. <coughs> um, but his role is slightly different as far as the practical application of the game goes. And I had tried for a long time to make another character um, <coughs> be the bad guy. But when it came down to it, I couldn't do better than Kefka. And it would be silly for me to write in another character to try to fill that spot. And so I had to work with I had to work with it. So So yes, Kefka is still the primary villain. <coughs> um Floating Continent, no comment. This happens during that year, no comment. So Unfortunately, I'm not giving that information out. I will not give that information out. That's a little bit too plot spoilery. <laughs> um, not exactly. My plan was to throw in a bunch of cameos because the characters are so spread out for so much of the game in vanilla. Um, there was a lot of room for cameos, like Terra is at the beginning. Um, there's a lot of instances just from vanilla where characters are in different places at different times off camera where they could potentially run into one or more of my characters. So I'll leave that at that. But similar to the way we saw Terra, even though Terra is not a part of my main cast, we also see some other characters. Probably not all of them. I had hoped to get as many cameos as possible but I didn't come up with specific ideas for um, all of them, so. <coughs> so yeah. Alright, we're, uh, we're, we're hitting 11.30 now for me. Um, I gotta be up tomorrow for work, so I'm gonna go ahead and um, cut it off here in a minute. Uh, any last minute questions, thoughts, ideas? So, um, next week, we're going to hopefully do uh, a better Q&A. Hopefully Kuga's curse will be lifted from his ISP and um, he'll have a better connection and uh, we'll try to get some more stuff planned out and worked up. And um, <coughs> To be fair, I don't expect to have a ton of prep time between now and next week. So, um, so we'll probably be winging it at least a little bit. Which I'm fine with, as long as you guys are. Yeah, I know, I would like to see the completion of this mod too. <coughs> it's just not in the cards. It's just not in the cards right now. <coughs> I've thought about trying to just do a little bit of work here and there. But I'm almost never motivated to even do that. <coughs> and it's not, it's not primarily a motivation thing, it's primarily a... Um, I mean, motivation is definitely one of the factors. Uh, I don't do a ton of work with hacking outside of the stream any longer. <coughs> I mean, I definitely tinker around with stuff occasionally, or poke around in the code, or, you know, get on the forum and look through stuff, but, um, but I don't do, like, serious, serious hacking like I was doing a couple years ago. I don't really have so much time for that in my life. Um, I've got a lot of other priorities. Um... That's not to say that I won't do some more at another point. Hi, Sniper Mage. Did you just show up here now?
You know, and I have thought about that. I have thought about continuing to do the hack on here when um, I wasn't working on a tutorial for something else. Because people would probably pick up a ton of stuff, and if I was doing it on the stream, I honestly wouldn't care as much about spoilers. Um, I would not be divulging, like, the whole thing, but I would be definitely... I mean, you guys would see everything as I'm making it. So, that is a possibility, and I will add that to the sheet for next week, actually. So, in the poll for what I should be doing next week, I will add an option for working on Children of Vector. Okay? <laughs> I will promise that. Um, but then it's up to everyone else to vote on the forum. So, ff6hacking.com, check it out. Things like that. This is uh, extremely incomplete. This is extremely incomplete. So, I'm, I'm assuming you just showed up a few minutes ago, um, Sniper Mage. We're actually, I'm actually getting ready to, to log off for the night. Um, I was going through uh, a demo for the beginning of um, a hack that I had worked on a few years ago, and may continue working on again in very small amounts. It probably will never be completed, but, um, but it's basically a second story that follows alongside of the original story with a different set of characters. So as you can see, we've got Wedge and Vix and Vargas in here, and this character you probably don't recognize because she's not actually in vanilla. <coughs> so, um, anyway, the stream will be up, this stream will be up on YouTube, and uh, as soon as I close this, I believe Twitch should make it pop up as my latest broadcast. So, please, check it out, Sniper Mage. I'd love to see you around more if uh, we do this every Thursday night at 9.30 Eastern Time, which is uh, UTC minus 5 hours, so I'm not sure where you're located. But if you're in the U.S., it's sometime between... You're going to be somewhere between 9.30 and... Uh, wow, I do math for... Wow, like 6.30 as a log-on log time. Well, that's actually, there's, that's not entirely clear. That's not entirely clear, especially because of his, um, his exit animation. He doesn't have a death animation like most of the bosses do. He has a fadeaway animation. So, I worked that into my story. No, no, save and stop, stop confusing people. Don't spout nonsense. No, 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 everything in the original game is canon. I actually go on to explain other stuff. I put Vargas in because I like Vargas. <coughs> no, no, unfortunately you can't play it. I mean, I... <coughs> <coughs> it's not, it's not done. Exactly. Duncan is claimed... See, that's a nice, that's a nice parallel. Duncan is claimed to be dead. And that's not actually true. Well, there you have it. Vargas is... All right, um, so that's that's basically all we got for tonight. All we have for tonight, and um, I'm gonna show you guys one more time because a lot of you people were not here at the beginning. Something super cool, super cool. This is my new office setup, and I have this here hanging above my head, and yes, it is basically the size of the room. I have a Millennium Falcon in my room. It is magnificent. And amazing. Uh, every time I do that, I lose my whole chat. Huh. Oh well. <laughs> uh, so in this, in this hack, um... Everything that happens with Terra and crew still happens. It's all exactly the same. This actually doesn't change that. It actually runs alongside. Definitely, definitely go back. I'll um, let me go ahead and put a link to the video for the um, for the original demo that I released for this. Um, let me do this. Hold on. Sorry, I'm in my other window now. I'm just, uh, I'm going to pull up this link and put it in chat.
<coughs> the idea is that they cross paths on occasion, maybe with some characters, but um, but their story is basically entirely not entirely separate, but they are uh, they're definitely segregated. They're independent of each other. But it still ties into the main story. So that's hard to explain, but because the characters, the parties themselves are never in the same place at the same time. However, there are a few cameos. Just like a lot of these characters were could be considered cameos in vanilla. So that's what it is. That is what it is. <coughs> All right. All right. Um, so I got to get going. I got to work tomorrow morning. But um, I'm going to go ahead and say that I'm going to try to put up a poll or try to put up a thread for next week. <laughs> and what will happen is tomorrow's Friday and I'll get to work and be like, it's fine. It's only Friday. I'll get to it later. But then that's the weekend. And then we get to Monday. I'm like, okay, Tuesday's two days ahead. So that should be fine. And then I'll get to Tuesday and I'll be like, Oh shoot, I should really do this. And then Wednesday, Thursday, we'll find out. We will find out when I actually get to doing this. <coughs> well, see, and that's that's the question though. Does it have does it make no difference in the overall story? Does it? <coughs> My channel name? Actually, we just have um, if uh, the ff6hacking.com YouTube page. Let me put it in here because I don't want to bring up my personal stuff. I do not want to bring up my personal stuff. Hold on. If you look up ff6hacking.com, on YouTube, I believe it should take you. Maybe it's just FF6 hacking. I don't know. Mad Seer still in here? Wow, when you type in ff6hacking.com, my extremely old um, sprite expansion tutorial is the first thing that pops up. And then the FF6 hacking channel. <coughs> So that has that has some of the other stuff that we've done on the stream. A lot of it's mainly hacking videos that we do. You can't open it. Ah, I see, I see. So just do when so when you're um on YouTube, just do a search for FF6 hacking, like all one word or FF6hacking.com, because that's our site. Um. And it should be, it's, it'll be the first user that pops up for sure. Um, and that'll have all of our previous streams on there, on here, <laughs> which isn't a ton of gameplay. We actually do a lot of hacking. This time around, I went through, you know, my demo and talked about a lot of the stuff that I did. Um, so we'll see. We'll see what we do going on from here. But if this is interesting to you, this is a, it's a really great group of people. And um, we do a lot of cool stuff. We do a lot of cool stuff. Um, so definitely check us out. And um, and I plan to keep streaming, even if only a handful of people show up and I just do, you know, random hacking stuff. That's what I'll do. Um, I've also considered spending some time um, playing a few completed hacks, just as like a Let's Play kind of thing. I know a lot of people do that, but on weeks where I have no preparation or no brain power left at the end of the day, um, it may be helpful for me just to do something like that. And at the very least, I can have uh, commentary on the kinds of things that would need to be done and what goes on under the hood um, in those hacks. So, so yeah. No, um, I actually only stream Thursday nights. Um, <laughs> I've thought about expanding... But currently, it is it is basically once a week on Thursday nights for about an hour and a half to 
in some cases, three hours. Um, but generally about an hour and a half. So it's not like I'm not on all the time, but it is going to be a consistent time. <clears throat> um, anyway, so instead of continuing to do this on stream, I'll stay on chat for a few minutes. I'm going to go ahead and close close out the stream, um, but I'll stay on the chat for a few more minutes if, uh, if you need anything else. Um, thank you guys for coming out. I had fun, um, and I will see you all next week. Happy hacking.